So this is an example of an exam question from previous years. And this was asking you to calculate OTR and then based on OTR, the maximum biomass without mass transfer limitation. So the answer is already provided in green, so if you want to try it yourself. So right, these are actually quite long questions. So I'm just going to walk you through all the steps that you have to do. The first thing, you start off always with the general formula for OTR. So KLA times the, the driving force, so the concentration gradient. And the first thing you should actually realize that the driving force or the concentration gradient is already given in the question. So it's not something you would have to calculate yourself, but you would have to calculate KLA uh, before you can determine OTR. Within the next step, we're going to have a look at how to determine KLA. Yeah. And in order to do this, what you always would start off first is by determining the power number. Now, the power number, we had to read up the chart that you've seen uh, in, in, the, in, in the PowerPoints before. And before you could do that, you first need to know whether the flow is turbulent or whether it's laminar. Now, so we're going to determine the Reynolds number as we normally do. So bear in mind, make sure at least that you have the speed, so uh, the capital N within a hertz, so in seconds, so rather than in minutes. So make sure to divide that over 60, which should give you two and a half uh, seconds minus one. Then the diameter, make sure this is diameter of the impeller. And then we've got the density and the viscosity is also provided. So first of all, we can work out the Reynolds number. And as you will see, uh, we are working here within the turbulent regime. So, and as you remember, the turbulent regime there, uh, this power number was independent of the Reynolds number. So you would be able to directly read it off the chart. And if you were given like an example question, you would always see that, um, you know, the, these graphs would be given. So you don't have to know it by heart, so you could read it off from there. Uh, and bear in mind, sometimes the power number is also written as P0, but uh, NP is more common. And if you assume that you have a Rushton turbine, so normally the turbine would also be given, the power number should be 10. So this is not an exact science, so maybe you would have a number which is slightly different, and in that case I would work with the number that you have. The turbulent regime, so we can use this formula to determine the power. So we've got the, the power number, we've got the speed, we've got the diameter of the impeller and the density. And there we would have the power needed to drive the impellers. Now, two things you need to take into account. The first thing is that we're looking at the power of the gas. So remember when you have the power of the gas, uh, the gas is easier to mix because you had all the bubbles, so it makes it uh, a little bit fluffy, like you had it in, uh, in chocolate mousse. So we have an aerated system, and roughly you only need half of the power in this case. It might be that it's given that you need to work with 40 or 60% of the power, but in this case we can assume it's only half of the power. Now this is very important. It's specifically said here we have two impeller sets, so we need to drive two of those. So what we need to do, we need to take the power, we multiply it by half, because we only need half of it to drive uh, if there is if it's an aerated system, so if there's gas in the system. However, we would need to multiply it by two as well, because it's not just one impeller, it's two impellers that we have to drive. So what that would mean, if you would fill out the formula, then assuming this factor half that you have to take into account, and a factor of two, which basically cancel each other out. We know that we need to look at the volume of the reactor. And we know that we need to determine the superficial gas velocity. Now, first of all, looking at the volume of the reactor. So bear in mind, this is never 100% full. In this case, it's given up 75% full. And we're working with a very common ratio, where the length is three times the diameter. So we know what the length is and make sure that we take into account this correction factor that the reactor is not fully uh, full. So we're only looking at actually the liquid. Now, so the volume should come down to roughly 3.9 uh, cubic meters. 
And this is an important one because this is where it often goes wrong. From this, we're going to calculate the superficial gas velocity. And it's given that it's 1 VVM, so 1 volume of air per volume of liquid per minute. So we know the volume of the liquid is 3.88 uh, uh, cubic meter. So we know that the volume of the gas then should also be roughly 0.3.9 uh, per minute. Now actually, in order to determine Q, this is normally given per second, so not per minute. So we need to divide this number over 60. And there we get the, the volumetric amount of air per second. Now the superficial gas velocity is given as Q over A. And the A is a, a particular type of area, so it's a cross-sectional area. Um, so this would be, basically, it's a circle, because we have a circular reactor, and your flow would move up from the circle. So it's just PR squared. And what you should come down to, if you calculate this, then you should come down to 0 0.048 meters per second. So this is the other thing that you need within the formula. So we've got the power now, we've got the, uh, the, vo the volumetric, uh, apologies, the superficial gas velocity. And then you need to fill out the complete formula you had in the beginning. So remember, this was the formula that was dependent on P, on V, S, and V. And if you fill this out with the empirical uh, formula that we have, you should come down to a KLA value of 0 .0, 0 0.072 per second. Now we've got KLA. We have the concentration gradient. Um, the only thing we need to make sure is that we look at the correct units. So we multiply these together. And here you should see that it should roughly come down to half a gram of oxygen per cubic meter per second. So this is the first part of the question. Yeah? So once we know the oxygen transfer rate, the next step is that we're going to look at the maximum amount of biomass. So if it's said that there's no mass transfer limitation, we can assume that OTR needs to be equal to OUR. Now we've just determined OTR, and OUR is normally equal to Q times X, where X is the amount of biomass per cubic meter. And the Q is actually given. So that's given, uh, but we only will need to convert it to the right units. So you will see that this is given in, in uh, a unit which is related to millimoles of oxygen per gram of cell per hour. Yeah? So we need to convert the millimoles of oxygen to grams or to kilograms, depending on what we want to do. And we also need to correct for the fact that one is per hour and the other one is in seconds. So all I'm going to do now is convert QO2 to the to right units to make sure that we can de determine x. And you can do this in different ways. I'm just going to show you how I normally do it, but there are different ways of how you can do it. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to calculate this per kilogram of oxygen, and we're going to do it per hour. So if it's per hour, we need to obviously multiply one hour at 3,600 seconds. And then we divide it by a thousand because we're going from gram to kilogram so we're making this a thousand times uh, we're dividing it by a thousand as well so in total we're multiplying this half by 3.6 now this is otr that we've converted now we're going to have a look at qo2 and the first thing that we need to take into account is the, the molar mass of oxygen and you should know that the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole now, we're also going to convert this back into kilograms. And here you will see that we'll get an answer, which is kilogram of oxygen per gram of cell per hour. And now you can see 
that we have the right units for what we want to do. So you will see we have OTR in kilograms per volume per hour. And the other one is also kilograms of oxygen per gram cell per hour. So X will then be equal to OTR divided over Q. And you will see if we'll divide these two uh, answers that we've got now that we end up with the correct units for it. So when you divide them always write out the units that you have to make sure that they are correct. And here you will see that they're both in kilograms. So these two would equal each other out and they're both per hour. So what you end up with is grams of cells per volume in the reactor. And bear in mind that your answer has to be reasonable here. So it would roughly be between a kilogram per cubic meter to maybe a little bit more than 10, but it shouldn't be more than that. So here we see that we should, your final answer should be four and a half kilograms per cubic meter.